Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by Netflix. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies streamed to your PC, Mac, or TV instantly. Plus, get DVDs by mail in about one business day. For your free 30-day trial, go to netflix.com slash twit. And by squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to publish a high-quality website or blog. For a free 14-day trial, go to squarespace.com slash twit. Today is Monday, April 11, 2011, and welcome to another edition of All About Android. I'm Eileen Rivera from Vegas. I'm, I'm Jason Howell from uh, from Petaluma. And I'm Ron Richards, also in Petaluma. Yeah, which yes. is kind of weird. You're we normally switched, not we, in Petaluma. We switch things around a little bit. But Eileen's always in Vegas. No, that's not true. <laughs> Eileen and I'm I can't be in the same room at the same time. That's, that's <laughs> in my contract, unfortunately. Yeah, we're kind of the same person yeah. in a way, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, hey, it's episode three, you guys. How are you guys doing? Sorry I'm not there. But as you can see, I'm kind of uh, in the throngs of people and, and green and technology thing. that watch has me, watch, watch me. Oh, oh, er, 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 er. <laughs> you are Sorry. all powerful, obviously. <laughs> But none of the technology. You're there for uh, NAB. Uh, I'm there. For, I'm here for NAB for a lot of our other uh, Twitch shows, and so uh, I'm glad I'm able to Skype here. I'm using Leo's mic. It's kind of crazy. Nice. Today. Yeah, it sounds I'm, good. I'm impressed yeah. you Skyped in, man. That's pretty. It's pretty impressive. From the that, I thought you'd be distracted in Vegas with all the TV yeah, stuff. Yeah, me too. Going I would have. Yeah. I would have figured yeah. you wouldn't You're have enough for. time for this show. Yeah, I Three make time in. for this show. <laughs> show. I don't right care on. where it is. If I'm in a hole somewhere, I'll do it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's dedication. Uh, <laughs> right on. Right. Well, well, this week we're going to be talking uh, about many things, including Andy Rubin's defense of Android openness. We've got Zoom's sales figures so far. Uh, we're also going to be covering a bunch of to-do lists for your devices. But uh, first things first, we have as our special guest today of uh, Complete Android Guide, Kevin Purdy, also of Lifehacker. Hey, Kevin. Hello, everybody. Hey, welcome, welcome to the show once again. Good you to were, see you. You were a Thanks part of uh, of at least one of the the beta episodes, yep. and I think it was like Indeed. the second or third beta episode. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. So, well, right yeah. on. Good to have you. Yeah, we're super happy to have you here. What is the complete Android guide? Uh, the complete Android guide is a how-to guide for the Android system. Uh, covers everything from booting it up to uh, you know really geeky. Uh, email stuff and everything. Uh, it's an ebook, a, a print book at completeandroidguide.com. Nice. It's another one of those cases of the of the manual that didn't come with the phone with the device. Like somebody, yeah, yeah, yeah pretty much. <laughs> it's, just, it's, a, it's making the the smarter you know document that we all needed that we didn't get. So for the you. phone with four buttons, it's pretty uh, irreplaceable. I hope. <laughs> right on. Awesome. Well, uh, without further ado, we might as well just jump to, jump into it. We've got a lot of stories, even though we tried to keep ourselves a little bit uh, a little bit shy this week, so that we didn't have an hour and a half long episode. We'll just <laughs> jump right into the news. <laughs> All right. Well, first up is uh, our good old buddy Andy Rubin is stepping out and defending Google on openness. Uh, in light of all the reports last week that Google was clamping down on Android and tightening its grip to overt fragmentation, newly promoted, congratulations, by the way, Senior Vice President of Mobile Andy Rubin responded with a lengthy letter disputing those claims, thereby giving me another chance to do our segment, What Would Andy Say? And Andy, yeah. what would you say? All right. Our approach remains unchanged. There are no lockdowns or restrictions against customizing UIs. There are not and never have been any efforts to standardize the platform on any single chipset architecture. Finally, we continue to be an open source platform and will continue releasing source code when it's ready. So there. So, so there. So there we go. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to time that last part. I'll get better at it as we do this <laughs> Some bold wor words from the Mr. from the Google he, guy. Yeah. yeah, he's got yeah. some fighting words. He's coming back, and um, you know, there's some people out there who don't really believe him. Uh, you know, I, we've talked about this on the show already. That you know, we think we thought it was okay for Google to do this. Yeah. Um, I'm curious what to, to know what you think, Kevin. Do you have a? We haven't heard your opinion on this whole matter. I think it's a. Uh I think that Google's a little gun shy about putting the source code for Honeycomb out there um, because even though it's a very tablet specific uh, 
you know, basic code, I, I think they're a little afraid to see what would happen if some of the phone manufacturers decided, oh, well, we'll, you know, make our own honeycomb phones. And uh, that's something Google wants to do in the next version, ice cream sandwich. But um, Chris DeBona from Google was a, ghost, was a guest on uh, This Week in Google uh, last week. And he said pretty much the same thing. He thinks that, you know, it's, it's more about making sure that the, you know, the phone and the tablet uh, architectures and, and uh, interface come together in the next release. And um, that's perhaps why maybe they haven't been so eager to get the honeycomb code out there to everybody. Uh, they want to make sure that everybody has a phone option and a tablet option and nobody's, you know, jumping ahead to uh, try to, you know, be the first manufacturer out there with a honeycomb phone. Yeah, that all makes sense. I, I guess uh, I guess we'll have to kind of see how this type of approach plans out in the greater uh, picture as far as you know, people buying into the Android uh, platform because it is open. And this is kind of peeling back that layer a little bit. Uh, but yeah, we've already kind of talked about how we feel uh, uh, about this type of approach. I think ultimately in the long run, Google kind of needs to do this if it wants to compete in the space. But and it's also good to see the reaction of him saying that, listen, no, we are open source and we're not trying to lock anything down. And like mm -hmm. kind of because kind of, because how how often do we blow things out of proportion and completely just like take some words, take something out of context and then be like, no, that's it. It's, it's not open source anymore. And mm -hmm. so it's kind of good to see him being aggressive and, you know, and, and coming out with this kind of statement. So um, I, I'm, I trust Google. I know that's a, a weird thing. I guess it's not a weird thing to say. I'm totally fine trusting can't. Google. Someone <laughs> told me once, you know, that my fault was that I trusted technology. So uh, it was one of our guests one day. I'm like, oh, Yikes. okay. <laughs> Yikes. I, maybe I shouldn't trust technology. And, and you know, Google, ha Google has about, you know, 10 to 20 masters, you know, between all the manufacturers, all the phone carriers, um, all the independent developers, uh, you know, it's, they, they got to work with a lot of people. It's not just something where they can just steamroll ahead of everybody and release the code whenever they want to. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, I, I agree with you guys. I think I, I trust that they're doing the right thing and that they're not just, you know, becoming very cynical about the whole process. Sure. All right, we'll move, uh, switching gears completely. Um, and Kevin, I'll, I'll let you take this. Cyanogen Mod 7, which is a name that, you know, some people, if you're familiar with rooting, might actually recognize. Yes, the, uh, after about four months of work, the folks at Cyanogen Mod have uh, released the latest version of their ROM, uh, which is based on Gingerbread, which is Android 2.3. Uh, so if your phone doesn't have 2.3 yet, you can get it through Cyanogen Mod installing it. It uh, supports about 30 devices, and you can install it if you have a rooted phone and you want to try it out. You can head to cyanogenmod.com and find the install file for your device. And it's, uh, I've been using it for a little bit, uh, actually just today, since this morning, but um, it's very, I like a lot about it. There's um, automatic uh, SMS replies, as in you're in the car or you're you know, walking down the street and you want to reply to somebody, you can create a finger gesture and just, you know, fling out a, I'll talk to you later, I'm, you know, driving or something like oh, that's that. That's awesome. That's really cool. That's super yeah. cool. Yeah. Overclocking, <laughs> underclocking, a lot of cool stuff in this. So if, you're, uh, if your phone feels like it's a little left behind, I definitely recommend trying out Science in Mod 7. I would agree that my phone feels a little bit left behind. <laughs> I think so. I will, ha <laughs> however, have to say that uh, it, as much as I love all the customization that you can do with Cyanogen Mod and uh, just kind of all the new functionality that they breathe into it, they do a fantastic job, by the way, and they're constantly working on this code. So I've been following the nightly builds and everything. Mm -hmm. And it's great what it can do, but there's just no denying that Gingerbread on the Motorola Droid, even when it's overclocked, I, yeah. you know, and I'm not overclocking like to the moon. I'm just doing like, I think, a, a 800 megahertz or, or a, a one gigahertz, uh, it's still sluggish and slow, and I still kind of have to wait to, for things to catch up with. You're gonna, you're yeah. gonna run into the hardware limitations no matter what you do with these sort of things. So if you're mm -hmm. trying, you know, like overclocking generally is cool because a lot of the chipsets they can, you know, we all know overclocking it unlocks the potential that that might be there. But at some point you're gonna run into a wall if you're running a Motorola Droid that yeah. doing this high end stuff isn't gonna work as much. But <laughs> yeah, and I, and it really makes me realize why um, why Motorola has decided not to actually port Gingerbread to yeah. the phone. Now, mind you, they, they might have been able to do a more efficient job working with the device and getting kind of the resources to go in that direction. Um, but I don't know. It, yeah. You know, I, I, I'll probably keep it on there because now I'm so used to this added functionality that I kind of don't want to be without it, but yeah. it's still kind of painful. I do have to give Cyanage in credit, though. I'm, I see it on more and more of my friends' uh, phone devices, like friends who I don't consider techie. Like, yeah. you know, like Because honestly, yeah. like, I, I mean, I've never installed on any, any of my phones because I've always wanted to keep my phone stock because I do so much testing and things like that. Mm -hmm. But I've seen it on people who aren't like us who have installed it so if it's getting out there to the population that's pretty that's pretty impressive so yeah I don't know. maybe i'll do it someday 
I'll get the I'll get the right on. We can do that on the show. <laughs> yeah, we kind of similar to what we're gonna do with Eileen. And I guess that'll be one of the big big questions is once we root Eileen's phone, if she yes. wants to put one of these ROMs on, which one does she choose? Ooh. Which one? Ooh, dun, dun. I've got many choices, right? Yeah, you have a ton of choices. <laughs> this is definitely the, the the big one in the room though. This yeah. is yeah. this is probably the biggest one out there right Takes now. Takes four more devices than Motorola does. Yeah. Which, is, which is ironic. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. All right. Well, uh, let's uh, dive right into hardware. And Ron. I love those. So, hardware. I know. <laughs> I'm, Boom. I'm impressed with that. Uh, so, yeah. So, uh, check in on some of the uh, our, of our international listeners. We'll be happy to hear that the Samsung Galaxy S2 is going to be available uh, in May in the U.K., um, nice. So everybody who's been waiting around, waiting for the Galaxy S2, don't have to wait much longer. It's going to become on May 1st across all major networks and retailers. So all of our UK listeners, if you've been waiting patiently for your Samsung Galaxy 2S, it's coming. Um, but then also what's even more, our, our friends up to the north, up in Canada, the Nexus S and the Motorola Zoom are now available in Canada. So if you've been walking the streets of Toronto or Vancouver and dying for your tablet or dying for your new Nexus S, now you can get it. Um, finally, uh, you guys can catch up with us. And uh, use the cool, the cool new tech. They didn't so, have to wait that. They didn't have to long. wait that long. Yeah, actually, Thanks. the thing. I gotta admit, the, the window. It's really interesting to see these international supports because the window between often is either released in Europe first, and then we're waiting for it to come. Yeah. Or it gets here, and everyone else is waiting for it to come. But the windows are getting smaller and smaller, and I have no idea if that has to do with like CE certification or you know the governments and stuff like that. But it's nice to see you know these these devices getting out there mm -hmm. around the world. So. Okay, so what's the deal with the white Nexus S? I've seen it on Engadget. Yeah. Um, and I just saw the photo of it. Yes. Does anybody know? Yeah, so it looks like, from everything that I've seen at least, that, that there, the rumors are true that there is a white Nexus S, which I don't really, I, I mean, I don't get the whole white hardware thing. I, I, I don't that. either. Yeah. But it, apparently the ne uh, Google's made and Samsung have made the Nexus S available to AT&T. And oh, AT&T. And, okay. And whether or not that's a, a way to thumb their nose at Apple or not, is, is that's what's, uh, I think that's what they're talking about on a gadget. Um, yeah. Yeah, so... If white's your thing and you want, you're on AT&T, <laughs> the Nexus S, that's is kind of the way to go, I guess, right? <laughs> I just don't get the you're white thing. I don't, I don't understand the white. The, it's, it's the, well, different. what happens is you end up putting, that's well, at least I do, I end up putting a case on my phone so I don't right. see the white in the back. So it's kind of useless. Yeah, totally. I learned that lesson the hard way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I want the white phone. Eh, who needs it? <laughs> so it's probably important to note that on the Nexus S and the Zoom in Canada, they're available um, on Videotron, Mobile City, Telus, and Kodo with Wind and Rogers expected to release in the near future, and you can get them all at Best Buy. So, as well. Okay. Yes. So. Nice. All right, cool. Uh, well, Kevin, sorry. We, uh, uh, no, sorry. Um, so it looks like Verizon and AT&T, well, there, there was a whole bunch of news last week about around the Zoom and uh, kind of what the sales figures were at. So what can you tell us about right. that? So uh, analysts are reporting that last week that sales for the Motorola Zoom were disappointing, but They've sold about maybe 100,000 since the release on February 24th. Uh, AT&T and Verizon have come out, though, in defense of the Zoom and the Atrix, the uh, phone that comes with the neat little netbook dock, saying that they were actually pretty pleased with the number of sales. Uh, no exact sales figures were given out by either party, but, you know, it's they're, they're saying, hey, it's, it's doing okay, despite what, you know, the independent uh, auditors are saying. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think about the Zoom and the Atrix? Is it, you know, is it just too early? Does it need more time to get into the market or... I mean, it's like they announced that they did a big split. I was going to say, it's not, you know, it's, I, I was going to comment on they're not spending millions of dollars like Apple's doing, but then I remember they did have a ton of Super Bowl ads. And so they have spent millions oh, of dollars on the true. marketing of it. Yeah. So, so in the, yeah. you know, I mean, there's a lot of brand equity with the iPad. I mean, there's a year of the iPad being out there. And I think in people knowing and trusting a, a new tablet is going to take some time. I think, you know, if you look at the, when, when the G1 first came out, when the Android platform came out, it was a slow start and then it picked up speed really quickly. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, right. And yeah. now, I'm seeing reports from Gartner saying that in 2015, polish all of them, including you know BlackBerry and iOS. So, you're right. I think it's just going to be a matter of time. Yeah, I, and I think I think a lot of it has to do with price point, and just like the more people see it in the wild, and the more like you know when you see when you see a dude with it on the bus, and you're just like, oh, that's cool. Then you, you go check it out, and how yeah. I mean, it's only been available and what like three months? Yeah, not long. Yeah. And once you see these playing Fruit Ninja, uh, Doodle Jump, and Angry Birds, you'd be like, oh, finally, it's a real tablet. <laughs> I'm waiting for We Rule. Enji Moko, bring me We Rule. Oh, that's okay. got to be coming. That's got to be right. Yeah, well, I've corner, already right? seen it in beta <laughs> testing, but I, you know, it's not out yet. But now that we have in-app purchases, it's bound to be there. So yeah. come on, okay. let's bring it. The more I'm apps, the better. And, and you know, it's just going to get better. Six months down the line will be a different story. Yeah. 
And I think also the prices. Yeah. I think the prices won't will, won't always be as high. I think for some reason, with Android being available on more platforms and more different manufacturers, whereas Apple's got a lock on that price point. Yeah. I think you'll see Android getting more competitive prices. I mean, so. and that's and that's a big part of this too is the competitive price standpoint. I mean, the yeah. iPad already has, like you said, the brand equity. It's, you know, it's, it's already in people's mind as being a good tablet experience. And it's also priced pretty well, especially when you compare it against these new kids on the block, yep. the, you know, the Android tablets that are trying to take it down, but yet cost as much, if not more. And, you know, the, the UI is still kind of being played around with. Yep. There's a lot of kind of uh, asterisks to buying an Android tablet right now. I really think that it's going to be a couple of years before you even see any sort of, of big, big push uh, in the other direction, but I, right. I do believe that it'll happen eventually. It's just too early to tell. Well, you've been you've been playing with the Zoom, haven't you? Yeah. So yeah. I so I got the Zoom uh, last last week on on last week's episode. Eileen was kind enough to give me the Zoom for <laughs> for a little less than a week, uh, and I will definitely say it was uh, less time than I felt like I needed. I actually oh. found myself pulling wow. it out and and using it. Um, yeah, it's nice. I, I really enjoyed it. There there were still. Those those times where you know suddenly Android kind of hangs up and you you have to force close or I you know there was one point where I couldn't get it to do much of anything like it was still working but it just wasn't working right and I ended up having to do a full restart and kind of flush it out and get it back to normal again um, but overall like I I enjoy it as a tablet it's my first tablet experience period I've never wow. really spent much time with an iPad or any tablet in general so it was kind of two experiments in one and I mean at the end of the day what I buy a zoom tablet i think it's still too early for me to tell but um i liked it more than i thought i was going to some things it just sings you know uh using it for gmail and for email what i really found myself doing is being on my cell phone checking my email realizing i have to write an email and just in my head that you know the thought jumps in there that you know this would actually be a lot more enjoyable to do this on the tablet just tapping out an email on that tablet just it feels right yeah. you know what i mean and, and the layout of the gmail app and yeah so that. it's almost like i think the the uh, full tablet experience you need to either travel or yes or go or like spend a day in the city like bouncing from meetings and things like that and, and mm -hmm. you find like because it, it's really funny because i went through a, i went through a february march i was traveling like crazy and we were talking and i was all over the place and i just got my ipad at the at the end of january and i used it like crazy i read so many books I've been home for the past couple of weeks, and I literally like haven't touched my iPad in like at least like yeah week. right like literally like there's dust on it. I'm like oh I, I should start using that again. Like I felt guilty I wasn't using it, but when I was on the road, when I was bouncing around, or when I'm in the city going to meetings, it's great because for that same reason, you can pull up an email, you can quickly respond to it, you can do whatever you want to do. It's great for media, it's great for mm -hmm. you know like watching things and mm -hmm. and the games and all that sort of stuff. So I mean it's interesting. I think we're still figuring out how to get tablets into our workflow. Yeah, we're hey. kind of figuring out where they land. What's yeah. that? Can What's I write a wrong here that Ooh. I did? last week I really feel sure. like I didn't give the zoom too much credit I have to say just one zoom that I neglected to say is that the battery life is really good it's actually comparable to the iPad and I'm wondering if that is partly to do with the weight of mm -hmm. of the uh, <laughs> zoom <laughs> that must be a lot of battery back there but hey that's what you want you want it to last yeah and, and well, it does yeah, we were kind of talking about that a little bit last week. It's kind of like, what what would you rather have? A really a really lightweight tablet that doesn't last, you know, right. as long, mm -hmm. or a little bit heavier of a tablet that actually has really bad. I, I did notice that the battery life. I think I charged it once. I know. I, yeah. You know, and I used yeah. it exactly. a, a good amount. It, I would it's, say. it's like the thing with the iPad is like I forget it needs to charge. Which is which is almost a bad thing. Yeah, then right. I'm like, oh crap! It's only got ten percent. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, you yeah, don't so, do it for so but, long. So but, on the weight issue, yeah. using it, did you feel as if the zoom was hefty, or did you? Was that? Um, I mean, you're a strong guy, though. So, I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> you're so manly, Jason. It's nice of you Show to those notice. Biceps. Um, it's, it's definitely also more. It feels more substantial in your hand. It has that curved back. Yes. And you have to hit it on the back to turn the power on and off. So it definitely feels like you're holding something as opposed to just kind of, you know, loosely holding a loose leaf piece of paper. Absolutely. And I mean, you know, I, I think ultimately what I learned was how, you know, how best to hold a yeah. tablet. You know what I mean? Yeah. Initially, I was kind of holding it up like I would a piece of paper. Yeah. And that gets tiring <laughs> pretty fast. Cradle, matter, yeah. You know, and then you kind of cradle it in the back. And I did the whole uh, iPad thing that they always had in the ads where you lay it on your legs and <laughs> type out a thing and that was fine you know eventually you kind of figure out how you're holding it and, and yeah. ultimately i think in the beginning i thought it was heavy because i was i was holding it wrong right <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. sure, you sure. <laughs> but uh but all in all I, I really did enjoy it and i would i it did i 
did I five hundred dollars out of my pocket enjoy it? I don't really know yet. And I think what you're saying, Ron, as far as taking it on the road or going somewhere where it would really be uh, a utility more than just kind of an interesting thing to play around with. Yeah, it's like uh, it's, would kind of bring that to life. I mean, it makes me think of back in like 2000 when I went on my first couple of business trips, and I went on one where I didn't have a laptop. And I was down doing work at a client and things like that and like frantically like jumping on a computer, checking email, stuff like that. And then the next business trip I took, I had elevated to the point where they gave me a laptop and I'm like, I can never travel without a laptop ever again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, yeah, so it's this kind of thing where you ease it into your, your, your everyday kind of activity. I, I assume at some point, I mean, I feel stupid because I carry around a tablet and the laptop and I feel that's double, you know, but I need my laptop for work. Yeah. But at some point I would love to get to the point where I'm traveling with just the tablet. I think that'd be cool. I'd say the hardest part right now is the whole chicken and egg aspect of the no. fact that there just really aren't a whole lot of apps that are yeah. tablet optimized. Yeah. You know, one one thing, one app uh, category that I imagine could do really well, and I, I've never seen this on the iPad, but I'm sure it's 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 awesome, is the the Twitter category, and it's more specifically something like TweetDeck, where yeah. if you've ever used the desktop version of TweetDeck, and it's got all these different columns that you can navigate down. Yeah. I mean, you know, you you check out the TweetDeck app on the Android and it's one really long column side yeah. to side. And I mean, I realize it's not tablet optimized. It's not right. programmed, you know, to, to run on a tablet in the way that the desktop is. Kevin, I'm curious to ask you when it comes to developing for Android and, you know, for, for, for someone like a company like TweetDeck to then mm -hmm. kind of tweak their app and make it tablet optimized, does that do something to the overall, I mean, does that just like enormously double the size of an application because you're building in two different interfaces you follow I don't me? think so and and TweetDeck's uh, CEO in particular uh, was was quoted as saying that really you know for him going between versions and 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 adapting to different kind of resolutions on uh, phones was not that difficult mm -hmm. um I, I I've heard it from both I've heard it from developers both ways that like oh geez you know like they'll you'll see notes in um market apps that'll say like you know run sorry but sorry HTC hero owners it doesn't work for no particular reason um but I also see apps where it works perfectly fine on every, you know, phone that I've seen. And and I got to say that on the Zoom, um, I don't know if you guys see this too, but like, I mean, the iPad apps that are, you have to 2X or, you know, big size mm -hmm. to use there, like the Facebook app in particular are pretty bad on the mm -hmm. iPad. But on the Zoom, it really doesn't feel that bad. I don't know if it's a graphics rendering issue or something, but, um, you know, I was using TweetDeck on the... Um, on the zoom and I would just, when I would turn it portrait style, it was just one column and yeah. you could flick between them. And when you did it landscape, it was, you know, like not perfect, but it was still, you know, multi-column view or whatever. I, I don't think it's a huge problem. I think it's getting developers to right now, getting developers to say, yeah, it's totally worth my, you know, five guys time to, um, convert this app for this one particular tablet that happens to be running this one kind of software. I think yeah. a few more tablets, uh, you know, maybe one upgrade or one, uh, you know, second version. Uh, and I think you'll see a lot more of it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the thing is that the, um, the, for what, like Kevin said, the tab, the Android platform for some reason scales better than the iPad stuff. I mean, yeah, like, totally yeah, interesting. You, you know, like there's not, not that weird. You don't like with a, with an iPad, when you're using an iPhone app, you know, it's an iPhone app because that little square and you could two X it. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, you know, Android, they just expand it. And I've seen a lot of applications. I've worked on a lot of applications where it just works, you know, like it just, yeah, it's yeah. not pixelated like yeah. it is on the iPad. You yeah. know, you just see a lot of the graininess. It looks almost eight bit sometimes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a scaling thing. I mean, I think, I think yeah. that iOS is a little harsher on that. So but, interesting. Uh, yeah. All right, cool. Well, uh, you know, speaking of zoom, I should probably throw this over to Kevin cause you've got kind of a cool announcement. Sure. Uh, the Complete Android Guide, which I uh, authored, is uh, we're putting out a new edition that actually covers Honeycomb. We have a whole chapter on the tablet, and it's a big chapter about all the various aspects of it that uh, you know you might not be used to from the phones. We're covering Honeycomb, uh, Gingerbread on phones, and uh, we have a new edition out. So we're also giving away Motorola Zoom. Uh, and anyone who buys the ebook or the print book uh, between now and I believe the end of uh, April. And or anyone who contributes to our wiki, our site, our our book is actually has a uh, you know big user base, and we uh, they contribute to the book sometimes and give me hints and tips and how tos. Uh, if you contribute to the book or you buy the book between now and the end of April, you are eligible for a Motorola Zoom giveaway. Uh, we've got a Zoom. We're going to hand it out to somebody, and uh, you can find out more about that. Uh, I created a Bitly link. It's uh, Bitly b i t dot l y slash uh, C-A-G-X-O-O-M uh, on the screen there too. So head there, you'll get some details about how you can win a Zoom from uh, my publisher and me. And uh, also check out the complete Android guide, which uh, if you previously bought the book or the ebook, it's also only 99 cents for the upgrade. 
So, Kevin, am I eligible for it? Um, <laughs> if you go into the wiki and yeah, you go tell ahead. Me you oh, I'm going into the wiki. wiki. All right. I'm gonna... <laughs> it's very fake looking typing there, Ron. Yeah. Uh, yes. so, yeah. You know so, what he just typed there? It was like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry that your wiki is now a mess. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Well, we have revision changes. So, right, anyways, good. yes. Uh, we're giving away a Zoom and you can check it out yourself and let us know what you feel about, uh, you know, the battery life versus the weight. Awesome. All right. Well, that's fantastic. Uh, people go check it out. All right. We are going to move on to our app section. All right. I like that one, too. They yeah. All well, all these, I'm sorry. It's, it's Eileen. Eileen did all this Great job, uh, this Eileen. Good stuff, job. So. Well, right. you added the music, though, Jason. So it's, yeah, the music it's and sound effects. Effort. But, you know, a lot of that music was actually submitted by okay. fans during our beta episodes. So they're awesome. finding new life in yeah. the segment headers. So. I had nothing to do with it. I just watched it. So um, <laughs> That's good enough. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so, Somebody's got to watch it. <laughs> so coming in on the apps world, uh, last week we were talking about music apps. And it was kind of funny that after we, uh, we were talking about streaming apps and Amazon's entry into it and we looked at RDO things like that um, there's interesting to see some news that the um, we had yet another uh, leak of the Google cloud based uh, Android music app uh, come out the guys over at the website tech from ten, uh, tech from 10 uh, got access to a developer version of the Android market um, of the newer version of the Google music app and it's interesting because you know it's an improved interface from what we've seen we've seen this leak before this is no new news mm -hmm. really um, but what's interesting is that um, the older leak uh, that previously came out showed that you could upload music to the Google Cloud, but in this version, it lacks that capability. So whether it was turned off for this developer version or if they're removing that functionality, I don't know. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah the, the older version, it, it would sync. You, yeah. you would actually upload, but you wouldn't know exactly what was going on. It was yeah. no descriptive, you know, description around it, just that it was kind of sending stuff up there. Yeah. This time, you don't get any of that, but you do get the settings pane that yeah. kind of shows you what you will be able to do. Yeah. Uh, you know, just kind of further uh, evidence that that this cloud streaming is kind of coming to Google at some point and hopefully soon. And it's, I it's, mean, about, the, it's, about, it's about time, time for it. Exactly. You know? Right after the uh, Amazon Cloud Drive move where you can now, you know, with their app, you can upload your music to the Cloud Drive and, you know, mm -hmm. buy albums and listen to them right over the web. And it's kind of interesting that the upload functionality disappears right after Amazon makes its big uh, cloud locker move. Yeah. yeah, totally. Quite a bit of a coincidence there. Yeah, possibly. Who knows? But well, I don't know. Well, I, I never trust these leaks, though. You know, they're, well, de yeah. they're developer versions. So. Maybe everyone's happy to let Jeff Bezos and his lawyers figure it out first, and then they'll <laughs> yeah. finish their way in. It's probably more accurate than you think, probably, when you think about it. <laughs> let them do the legal battle. Right, <laughs> right, yeah. Well, along with this leak, uh, Groove Shark, an app that was available in the Android market, has been booted. Uh, it was a free app in the Android marketplace, also for iOS and BlackBerry. I believe it's still available for the BlackBerry. Um, but... Uh, Basically, there was some licensed music and some unlicensed music, and uh, the company itself was the subject of uh, lawsuits initiated by companies like EMI and Universal Music Group. So uh, there's been no real comment from either party, Google or uh, GrooveShark, but, uh, you know, kind yeah, of all, all of this specific. is coming at the same time. It's kind of, you know, suspect. Yeah, I mean, the Google uh, Google spokesman did say that they remove apps from the Android market that violate our policies. That's mm. about as descriptive as they got about it. Right. Um, I guess I, you know, I I'd never really used Groove Shark very much, but I'd heard about it a lot, and I never, I can't say that I ever heard of it in in the. Uh, light of being like a copyright infringing yeah, app. Yeah, and I know people who use it like swear I, by it. And yeah. like I never I never really played with it, but I've never heard I, I always thought it was one that was like okay. Like it was legal. Mm -hmm. you know, but I Well, know. I used it. Um, I'm a VIP member actually. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> um, <laughs> and you know, like RDO has the offline um, capabilities um, so on the app. Okay. All which right. is really nice. So you could just, you know, I would just search for a song, boom, add that to my offline. It's kind of a part of my phone. So, uh, I mean, the key thing is that unlike RDO, some of that stuff wasn't licensed. So that was the, that yeah. was the issue. Right. All these app developers have these great ideas and the music companies have this other idea, which is why don't you just keep paying us more? Yeah. It's, I know. It's yeah. really frustrating kind of. Well, that's the classic, I mean, that's the classic battle. It's just changing platforms now. I mean, first we fought right. it, we fought on the desktop and now it's happening on the mobile side. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really should be no, you know, but what's interesting, what I think is more interesting is that if indeed it is due to these claims by EMI or Universal, the power it has for them to go to Google or Google out of fear to bump it from the store, that's a pretty long reach. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. 
because really Google shouldn't care. You know, I mean, it's, it's how, that's when they get into those whole, you know, kind of what's okay, what's okay, what are the, what's the license and what is okay to be on the market unless, and what isn't, you know. Mm -hmm. so. Unless they're trying to make nice with music companies for some un, you know, unannounced. Look at you connecting well, the dots. There you go. We're through <laughs> the looking glass here, people. Yes. <laughs> Junior Columbo. That's why he's on the show. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right. Well, switching gears a little bit. Um, I just wanted to talk about this. It's called SPB Shell 3D, and I'll go ahead and throw up some video here into the feed. It's an expensive uh, home replacement app. Uh, it's about $14.99. Ouch. And yeah, the, the the reason I wanted to talk about it is because oh, I actually cool. I Look actually at that. saw that's this. Cool. Yeah, well there you go. See, that's why I want to talk about it. <laughs> Look at that! Oh, it moves all around. And, awesome. You know, I haven't used it because I haven't plunked down fifteen bucks on a uh, new you know home replacement app quite yet. But Ooh, okay. I saw this months ago in a video, and I thought that it was just like a concept style video of something that would probably never see it. You know, it had Android the name attached to it, but I was like, eh, whatever. It looks too different from the Android, you know, uh, look and feel uh, so for it to be real. Cool. But turns out it is, and it's a little pricey, but as you can see, uh, you know, it gives you, it gives you a whole bunch of things. It gives you 16 panels of which you can, you know, drop your, their, uh, their customized widgets onto shortcuts, whatever you want to fill those with. Uh, uh, just a host of widgets actually included with this. Integration of that three-dimensional carousel that you saw for switching screens. Uh, really easy drop to uh, uninstall apps, that sort of thing. And, you know, it, it, from what I've read about it, it's extremely intuitive, super snappy, uh, just kind of a good way to completely change the look and feel of your device. So, this is if, so cool. If you're at a point to where look you're kind that. of getting... Ooh, oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> I, I, I clicked away yeah, at the no, wrong time. The no, yeah. no, I love this. You know what I love? I love on the marketplace, the description of the app is like, next generation user interface, enjoy your phone. Yeah. Like, like my phone's phone been again. so really? boring to use. It's so not so... Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, there's oh. a lot of home replacement apps out there and they all kind of do similar things. This is the first one. We're well, not the first one actually that sliding one that you pointed out eileen during one of the beta episodes was oh, pretty, right. pretty different but this is one of the few that i've seen that's just kind of flashy but it's apparently you know pretty functional i don't know i would love to try it out when i find 15 dollars for a home replacement app <laughs> that's really cool i gotta admit i'm impressed by that i very very rarely have those home replacement apps really kind of wowed me to the point where I'm, i still stay again i stay stock it's like same reason why i don't use cyanogen yeah but this one it's pretty this is the kind of thing i can impress my dad with this might be worth $15 to yeah. me. Yeah. This is like, this is like 24 technology. You know how in 24 they always had those interfaces that, don't, that aren't yeah, right. real or whatever? Like, this really looks like that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> I dig it. Nice. Oh, look at that. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the screenshots <laughs> and like the, the, the little uh, I, the text message windows. Like, it's like all like kind of 3D and like, oh, that's really cool. Yeah. For those of you listening to our audio podcast, check out the link on our show notes because, yeah, this is worth looking at. Yep. All right. Well, this is something we're going to probably have to get used to here, but we have a break here uh, to talk about Netflix. That's right. Service that I'm pretty positive. I can go ahead and say that we've all used at one point or another and probably still do. Uh, this episode is brought to you by Netflix. Netflix delivers movies directly to your home. That saves you time, money, and hassle. You can instantly watch thousands of TV episodes and movies stream directly to your PC or Mac. You can also stream to Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, Nintendo Wii. I actually have a PlayStation 3 and I stream from it all the time. Plus you get DVDs by mail in about one business day, which is how they started the service. So that's probably what you've heard of first. Uh, watch as many Many movies as you want, anytime you want. There are never any late fees, no due dates. Uh, and one movie that I actually watched recently, I thought I, I had never seen it and saw it on the list. I was like, oh, yeah, I might as well watch it, was Toy Story 3. Oh, oh that's they, they just added film. that. I saw that the other day. Yeah, yeah they, they yeah. added it very recently. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, I mean, what uh, what can you say that hasn't already been said about it's Pixar and Possibly and a perfect series. movie. Oh, yeah, 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 no, yeah. It's fantastic. You know, um, I own the complete seven season set of Buffy the Vampire Slayer on DVD and I bought that before Buffy got on streaming and ever since I'm still catching up on the entire seven season run I've decided to just watch the streaming version instead of my discs it's just yeah. easy yep. I don't want to put the disc in and then you totally. know some of it is from what 19 or 2000 or whatever and the the menus are weird on the DVD and they make a so lot of, the menus make a yeah. lot of noise when they load yeah. up yeah. And you're, oh, yeah. I can't yeah. figure out wait which is yeah. the next episode I have yeah. no idea 
It's so and easy that, on Netflix. It just is episode number, and it mm -hmm. just loads the next thing. Oh, I love it. And, you know, I got a little annoyed because they, they used to break out the seasons as individual titles. And, and for TV shows, they've consolidated them so there's just one entry, and all the seasons are listed in one long list. And I thought that was annoying, but I've been watching No Reservations with Anthony Bourdain, uh -huh. and it's totally easy to get, navigate through the multiple seasons. And it cleans up your queue, and it's less things in there. Yeah, and it just so, keeps yeah. track of it Netflix all. is yeah. great. Love it. Love uh, Netflix. Love it. It's a killer app if it were an app. <laughs> And, and someday, maybe it will be someday, someday soon. It'll cross be our an fingers. App, I'm well, sure. someday we'll have it. Uh, though I know nothing about that uh, officially. On Google TV, which is powered by Android. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I, oh, that's I, right. Yes, I watch. It I is. use. I use the Netflix app on my Google TV at home. So there you go. Yeah. Thank you for reminding me of that, Kevin. Yeah. That's it's yeah. awesome. In fact, I like it better than the Xbox version. Oh, interesting. <laughs> oh, not bad. All right. Well, you can instantly watch that movie, those those shows, what, everything that we talked about, or you can choose from thousands of TV episodes and other movies when you register for a free trial membership. So if you haven't already, go to netflix.com slash twit. Be sure to sign up for your free trial at netflix.com slash twit. And we thank Netflix for their support of twit and uh, all about Android. I got to say, Yay, I'm loving Netflix. getting these little, little ad reads Ooh, here. It makes it feel I'm more official. Yeah. I'm also really excited for when that Netflix app comes to the Android, right? Right, guys? Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> I hope it happens soon. Just Come a on, friendly guys. little nudge there. Pre-installed yeah. pre on certain devices. 2011. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's get to the meat of the show. Uh, this is one of my favorite segments. Let's uh, step favorite into bump. the arena. To enter, one lives the Android Arena. Boom. So in that, in that, in nobody wins in that in little animation. They, they both blow up, don't they? So I just realized. Yeah, yeah no one, no one wins. <laughs> it's in the a Android suicide Arena mission. At all. That's yeah. true. <laughs> one, one rises from the ashes later, like a phoenix. You just sure. don't see it. There you go. Okay, that's later on. Yeah, right. it's after the credits. Yeah, exactly. indeed. <laughs> all right. So let me wrangle my technology here. I'm so, we're, so we're looking at we're looking at to do list apps, right? Yes. We have last Thank week's you. poll too. Do we oh, want to yeah. visit last yeah, week's poll? Yeah, let's do that first. Here, um, I will go ahead and pull this up here, and we have from last week. It was the cloud music services, and what cloud music service? I actually made this multiple select so that people, because there are a lot so of them many. out there. Um, and which ones do you use most? And I mean, Pandora is kind of the granddaddy. Although, you know, we realized during last show, last week's show that there are kind of two categories within yeah. here. There's like cloud music storage and cloud music streaming. And this this kind of takes them all at equal footing. But uh, Pandora is kind of the big the big yeah. daddy. And it's been around for the concerned. longest. I'm not surprised that it won. But I am surprised at how many people voted for the Amazon Cloud Player so early in its infancy. Yeah, you know, yeah. So got a lot of steam. There's yeah. a lot of positive buzz around that. A lot of buzz. I'll, I'll be curious to see if that positive buzz renews at the end of the year when yeah. the 20 gigs suddenly become. Yeah, exactly. Paid at least for. Yeah, was, come back, come back next February when I, <laughs> yeah. when I go back down to five gig and I'm like <laughs> frantic because I can't get my music. But. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, 38 votes for Audio Galaxy. I, I I will actually go ahead and say we got a ton of emails from people who had we never did. heard of, of Audio Galaxy before. Cool. And, I was surprised. Uh, I thought that. people because it's been out for a long time. I guess I thought people knew about it, but yeah. maybe not. Yeah, so um, we're happy that you guys are discovering some new apps. That's what this section is all about. This week, we're going to talk about to-do lists. Yes, because we're all obsessed with uh, getting things done. And, getting and, things done and, and, and efficiently. And efficiency and delivering. Come on. <laughs> you, you are obsessed with getting things. I've never Whoa, met oh, anybody really? so on time with everything and and oh are we not on time okay i've got to make another call cuz i'm on time and you're not life, that's li wrong life's busy you can't you can't be in one place for too long no yeah i'm i'm a i'm a i'm a big believer in the getting things done um, productivity mm -hmm. kind of a the whole david allen suite of things you know the book and then building off from there um, and you know we and when we we talk about there's so many to-do list apps that are available on android um, so we want to take a look at a couple this time around. Um, but w one thing we want to call out is that we didn't look at um, Astrid to-do list, which is the one that's been around probably the longest. Um, I, I reviewed that on App Judgment, the show on Revision 3 that I also um, uh, host, uh, do reviews for. Mm -hmm. I did that like about a year and a half ago, I think. And that one's pretty good. I mean, it's a good entry-level um, to-do list app. Um, but we want to take a look at some other ones that people might not have heard of. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I honestly had not heard of Astrid oh, uh, yeah. until this came along. And then as I was searching, I, I looked at how many downloads it's had and it's a reviews monster, yeah. and everything. Yeah. I was like, whoa, this is yeah. kind of like the big one. Yeah, it's a biggie. It's, 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 it's the a, one that everybody a, seems to know it's about. A I mean, it's a light app. It's a small install. I mean, they didn't yeah. go too crazy with the bells and whistles of the design. And yeah. It does sync to remember the milk, though, which is kind of nice. It does sync to remember the milk, and, and which, is, which is cool. And that, that's why I kind of put Astrid as like the beginner, mm -hmm. kind of like if you're starting out with to-do 
do to you want to use to do list apps? Astro is a good place to start, and remember the milk is a nice web kind of companion. But I think some of the ones we have here are, are have have made me rethink my recommendations. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll I'll just go ahead and dive in um, with the first app and get this one out of the way here. Um, it's it's actually one that I've used for a while, not necessarily because it's the most amazing app in the world. It just happens to be one of the first apps that I installed on my phone when I get it. When you think about app categories, I mean, to do list is right up there at the top of what you probably will want to use on your portable phone at some point, you know, right up there with like a calculator, you know, it's yeah. just like one of those utilities that's kind of a no-brainer. Oh, no, yeah, yeah Evernote that, has replaced that for me. I can't live without Evernote now. Yeah, yeah. see, and that's an app that I, I need to get oh, into you need to embrace point. it, dude, totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. no, seriously. I get, yeah. Well, that actually brings me to one question which I was going to ask, which was um, what what do, would you say is the big difference between a notepad and a task app? They're very similar. Yeah, you well, that's the thing. I mean, a lot of people use notepad. I mean, a notepad is just a free form place for you to write notes for. Mm -hmm. And so the, the immediate instinct is to use it to make a to-do list. Mm -hmm. And now the thing, with right. that, the, the thing with that is that all you have is a list of data. You can't do anything with that data. You can't prioritize it. You can't set dates. You can't set alarms. You can't say anything like that. So a to-do app lets you add those kind of bells and whistles to you know, kind of turbocharge your to-do list. Mm -hmm. So I can say, listen, I need, to, I need to pay my rent, and I need to pay it by the 30th. And it will beep, your phone will beep at you two days before if you tell it to, to tell you to pay your rent. If you just have a, a, a notepad, you just have pay rent. And if you don't look at that notepad, you're never going to remember. Right. So, so to-do list app gives you more tools to you, to empower your to-do list, basically. Perfect. Yeah. That was a fantastic uh, right. description of the difference be between the two. Because when <laughs> I was actually thinking about it, I was like, oh, well, you know, do some of these other notepad apps go in here? So like, there's got to be a, there's well, a it's difference. Well, it's the same thing I would say, again, to pontificate a little on to-do list. I mean, a lot of people tend to use their email inbox as a to-do list, mm -hmm. which, Kevin, you could probably, you know, you probably agree with me here. That's Not not a great idea. Not a good yeah, idea yeah. at all. It's just, I mean, it's I so. I do that. So I do that from time to time. Yeah, yeah. and it's so it's so easy because it's so natural, but it's not what it's made for. So yeah. yeah. So no, that's a good point. All right. Um. Cool. Well, then I will go ahead and launch right into mine here. I uh, took G Tasks. You can see the uh, little icon up at the top there, and uh, I got I got this one initially just because when I got my Android phone, I was like, why doesn't Google have an integrated Tasks app? They have Tasks built into Gmail. There should be an app on here. It's like Android is on a phone and it just all seems to work you know uh, conceptually but they don't do that for some <laughs> reason so i got gtask because it kind of sounded close to what google would have named it that was literally my reason for getting it and uh you know it's a pretty straightforward uh task manager that syncs with your google tasks there's not a whole lot to uh to say about it if you've got different categories you can list them up at the top there uh, or you can switch to them rather from the top or swipe side to side to go between uh it's pretty easy to add add a task you just you know uh, settings and uh, click the uh, the new task and and punch it in. Um, you can set kind of uh, recurring syncing. You know how how often you want it to sync to the to uh, to the Google servers. Uh, when you're done with an app, uh, you just go ahead and you know click that and it check marks it and puts it into the completed field. There's no not a whole lot of bells and whistles with this one to be honest. Um, you yeah you can clear that and remove it when it's done um and that's why part partially i'm i'm kind of excited to hear what you guys have because i've just been using this one because it's easy it's quick it's no frills uh but i'm curious to know what other apps can do that are maybe a little bit more full featured because i mean just kind of diving into this app there's there's really not a whole lot to it uh, you you can set a reminder so that it gives you a ringtone you know set, sounds off a ringtone lets you know that one of your tasks is up uh, for a scheduled uh, due date but that's i mean that's that's kind of about it the main feature is the Google Sync with Gmail and Google yeah. Calendar and the tasks. Yeah, Absolutely. which is which is impressive. Which is, I mean, if you're if you're on that Google ecosystem, that's a must have. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, yeah. that's really all I needed. That's why I ended up getting this. I just wanted what I put in here to appear in my Gmail on my browser when I opened it up, and that that was really right. kind of my whole um, my whole point. So, yeah. uh, so that's G Tasks. You can find that. Evening, in everyone. Whoa. Whoa. The opening day. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> Google's talking. To oh, us. Wow, they've, they've oh, good evening. The show. <laughs> this will be over in just a minute. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Yay, live TV. It's yes. a very, very um, Are... kind notice saying, hey, the show floor hey, is going to close. Get out of uh, here. Pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I, I will go ahead and, and put in the edited version of this um, the QR code. So if yes. you happen to be watching the video along with us, you can just go ahead and pick up your phone and scan and the QR and code. And that's one thing that we talked about. We're going to try to put the QR codes on the show and maybe also in the show notes. Is that something people want? If it is, let us know. Yeah, let yeah. us know. Yeah. Absolutely. Because yeah, um, it 
is a little bit of work, but um, but so the QR codes are really helpful. So I don't know. yeah, well, I mean, and I think the uh, the obvious uh, other side to this is a lot of people watch this on their phone. Yeah. And you're watching it on your phone. You can't necessarily you scan the a, screen yeah, on your a phone. Little challenge there, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but we did get this as an email uh, uh, <laughs> suggestion. So let us know if you like that. AA at twit TV. There you go. But soon they'll be watching on their Zoom with their phone nearby. So that's yeah, right. Yeah. See, then it'll be solved. infinitely usable. Yeah. <laughs> Right on. All right. So who is up next? Eileen is up next. All right. Oh, Eileen. yes. I would like to talk about Wunderlist, or as I call it, Wunderlust. <laughs> um, this is a free app for the Android marketplace. It just came out probably about a month ago. It's been on iOS uh, for a while. What I, um, what I need for my task management is I need it on my mobile phone, and I also need it on my desktop. And I also don't want to pay a lot of money. So OmniFocus, which isn't available on Android anyways, is just kind of not an option because it's really expensive for me. So uh, what Wunderlist does um, beautifully is sync between all your devices. I just literally added an all about Android uh, task. I actually emailed uh, this task to both you, Jason and Ron um, via email and you should receive a link. I think the one, one drawback, um, you know, they kind of pitched this whole, you can email your tasks to people. Well, you can't do it on your phone, which kind of sucks. I, you have to do it on the desktop. And there's also a web uh, component as well. But uh, it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. Ron, if you go into the menu, you go to settings. Okay. Um, and then you go to the top background. You have many different backgrounds that you to customize this. Yep. Uh, there oh, you yeah. go. Um, it's very simple and easy to use. I mean, you just add a uh, you know, category for your list. So I have a Twit category. I have a dog category. I have a groceries category. I have an all about Android category. I have an NAB category, a travel category. It's very easy to use. You can star tasks. You can, um, and then it'll, it'll show up. There's various tasks like today, if there's anything scheduled for today, stuff that's overdue, again, starred. And again, what's great about it is that it syncs perfectly. I don't have any problem, you know, syncing. I do have an iPad, so I sync it, you know, between my Android, my iPad, my desktop, no problem. Um, uh, and it's just really easy to use and really simple, and it's gorgeous. I think the UI is really nice. Yeah, I was really impressed by this one because this one, we were talking about how um, Android apps are starting to look a little better before, yeah. the, before the show, Kevin, we were talking about that as well, how the, the design stuff, and this is very iOS-y. You know, it's very much, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, a lot of the Android apps tend to be a little more developer-y, but this mm -hmm. one is, this one was nice. I was impressed by it. So. Yeah, wood paneling you know, and all that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. and, I, and I feel like, um, you know, early on when it launched, there was a couple of bugs, but I think that they've, um, I think that they've worked it out, and um, I haven't looked back. This is, this is my default to-do list, um, and uh, it's for those of you who really need, you know, both a desktop and a, and a mobile app, or, or, or maybe not, you know, it's just, it's nice and simple and free. <laughs> that's, that's key. <laughs> it's key. Nice. Awesome. All right. Um, well, that that's pretty cool. That's definitely a, a little bit different from mine, which is like black and white. Yeah. And that's it. <laughs> At least it adds well, a little think, bit of life to it. I think it. that you're going to see that's the theme with the ones that we're looking at here. I mean, Wonderlist is, and Eileen, you said that's available on iOS, right? So, yeah. So, so they're trying to make it look like the iOS one. Um, and, and It's very, very close. Yeah. There's only one thing that it doesn't do, which, you know, on the Twitter app for Android, you can, um, you can kind of like pull it to reload. Yep. Um, that's what it does in the iOS, and it doesn't do that here on Android. You have to actually go to the menu and hit the sync button. Yep. But that, you know, that's one thing. But other than that, it looks exactly the same. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, so I think I think the, the, the story of these are the newer apps that we're looking at. They're going to start to look a little more nicer design. Mm -hmm. The app I wanted to play with was um, I, 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 I looked around for a different kind of to-do list app, um, and I looked for one that was more GTD-based, uh, getting things done based, and I found um, Action Complete. Mm -hmm. um, which is currently now it's free in the Android marketplace, but that's it's not going to be free after September 30th, 2011. So, oh. um, so if you want it, try it out. Try it out before September 30th. They're going to start charging uh, for, or they're only going to offer the pro version of their app uh, starting October 1st, moving forward. Okay. Um, but action, and it's Action Complete Pro. That's the one that they're going to start charging for. But Action Complete is, um, like I said, it's based off the Getting Things Done uh, methodology by David Allen. So if you've read that book, if you know about GTD, this will be like, like a lot like how. OmniFocus for the for the Mac platform.
platform, the iOS platform exists and is very much a tied to tied to David Allen's GTD methodology. This is kind of like the only focus for Android. What I found really interesting about it is that they have a web version as well. So when you talk about syncing, this doesn't sync with Remember the Milk or Tudulio or any of those other kind of to-do list tasks. It syncs with their own web uh, web uh, application, which is pretty cool because it keeps it all kind of in one place. So Eileen, like you mentioned, you get that desktop experience as well as you get the phone experience. That's um, cool. Yeah, and I was really impressed booting it up though, uh, taking a look at the app because it just looked it looks really nice. Like it looked unlike any kind of Android app I've seen in a while. Like immediately when I hit the menu button, instead of normally when you hit the menu button, and we all know on Android you get that little pop-up menu mm -hmm. at the bottom, hit the menu button here and I got this little um, overlay Ooh, menu. Yeah. yeah, right? I like that. that. Yeah, nice. that, that is pretty cool. Um, and, you know, of course it, you know, inherits a lot of the, the standard Android kind of um, look and feel with stuff, but um, really nice. You've got this nice little dashboard um, and it's really easy. You can um, tag things, locate, you can tag things with your location so you can add location awareness. So if you need to pay, you know, you need to mail your bills and you're near the post office, it will rem remind you, hey, you're near the post office, why don't you go mail your bills, that sort of thing, which is pretty cool. Um, it also allows you to um, to add things really easily. You just hit this. It's funny because this this uh, icon up here, uh, this little plus icon, I, I, I thought that was a D-pad controller on a video game. <laughs> so I was like, and so it took me a like, second wow. to realize. I'm like, oh, oh, that's a plus. It has Super oh, Mario Brothers yeah, in exactly. here. Exactly. Um, but what you can do is it, it takes a lot of information. So you get you can name what your action is. Um, you can associate with a project. Um, you know, so I've got all about Android here as a project. You can tag it. You can associate people. And this is one thing I thought was really cool. It pulls from your um, address book. So if I start typing Eileen, it pulls up Eileen Ooh. Rivera. Yeah, isn't that cool? Oh, that's great. Yeah, like so, that. yeah. So I can you can see all my Jasons, and I'll pick Jason Hell. There you go. Yeah. So um, thank you for picking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> and everybody who's a comic fan will see my comic friends. Um, so yeah, and you can add notes. And what's interesting is you can weigh the tax. So there's a sliding scale where you can say, listen, this is really important. So I need to. I'm going to weigh it at a 90, or you know, it's not that important. I'm going to slide it down. And so it will set your priority. Yeah. Um, you can also set due dates and. Um, Pretty much, it's you know super super powerful, and I what I really liked also was that you um, it uses the idea of context, which is like a GTD methodology, which is like okay, I need to do something, but what is the context of that? I need to I, I always use pay my bills, but I need to pay my bills. That's something I do in person and by hand, whereas I need to write this document, I do that on my computer or I do it for this project associating with it. But what's really cool is it allows you to separate the actions from uh, the things that are associated to your projects as a nice little idea space so you can capture ideas that might necessarily be part of a project mm -hmm. yet. I mean, it's really, really powerful. Um, so I was pretty impressed by it. Um, the, the pro version is only $5. Mm -hmm. So if you want to get rid of the ad up top and you want to um, you know, integrate more deeply with their website, it's not that expensive. And when this free version goes away, $5 isn't that much to spend. So if you're a hardcore gtd -er and you've been looking for a GTD app, this is probably the way to go. So. You know, I like nice. the color coding too. I noticed on the app screenshots that you could choose, you know, to color code probably based on, you know, this groceries and this is, you know, finance or, you know, work or whatever. I, yeah. I like that kind of thing. It just, yeah, you know, they, adds. they make it visual. Yeah, yeah. You can see yeah. it on the screenshots. Yeah. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. I dig it. Nice. Great recommendation. Yeah, that's good. Well, my one question about an app that has so many bells and whistles is, do you get lost in it? Well, that, at all, that's or? the thing. I, I wouldn't recommend it for a beginner. That's the thing. I mean, like yeah. you, you've got to you've got to you've got to like buy right into that methodology. You've got to read and, David Allen's book, and it's a short read. It's not. A, I mean, it's not a. It's not a. It's it's not a hardcore read. But you got to buy into the idea of uh, okay, there are actions, there are contexts, and every action requires a context, and and every project is made up of actions, and right. all it becomes is like verbiage. My friends have teased me that it's almost like a cult, but you know, <laughs> mild they vary. Um, but you know, but the thing is, when you adopt it, you can be really, really productive. And and having this kind of app on the go is really helpful. And the sync to their uh, web app is really cool because it uh, gives you that desktop view. Mm -hmm. so. Nice, awesome. Well, Kevin, uh, you have one that you use that's that's different from all of us. And uh, yeah, why don't you go ahead and tell us about your app? Sure, it's a to do dot text, and it sounds just. It is just what it sounds like. Um, it is actually a, a to-do system that is based on a single text file, a .txt file that you keep in your Dropbox. Uh, you know, the Dropbox syncing app that you can have on almost every platform, uh, you know, known to computers. And, uh, you know, it's funny because when I started at Lifehacker, which is my civilian job, I'm an editor over there, I would ask Gina, who is the uh, founding editor there and also the uh, host on This Week in Google, I would ask her and Adam Pash, the current editor, I'd be like, what do you guys use here to do systems? You know, what's your... What's the secret sauce? Like you run a productivity blog and they would say, oh, you know, text file. 
Like, oh, really? <laughs> like, you're just using a, they're like, yeah, yeah, I just keep a text file on my desktop. And, oh, oh, okay. Um, but the nice thing about todo.txt is um, it's an interface for that text file, and it straddles both worlds. You can get very GTD, uh, getting things done-ish and geeky, and you can add contexts, and you can add, um, you know, uh, priorities and projects. Uh, but the way it shows up in the text file is it's a, you know, a character, a plus or a at or a, um, a number next to the task. And you can do both things. You can use the app, which is very good and, you know, very easy to create tasks on and complete them, uh, sort by list, refresh and all that kind of stuff. And it's just reading straight off that Dropbox file. Or if you want to, you can actually, you know, from your desktop, Windows, Linux, Mac, wherever, you can edit the file manually, which is what I end up doing. I, I docked my, uh, my to-do file right to my uh, uh, Windows taskbar. And so you can edit it there. You can, you know, check it on your phone and it, it works pretty much anywhere you want to go. And, and Gina is the type where she sweats the details. And so every update is adding new features and, and letting you get, you know, very specific about uh, when you update, when you sync, all that kind of stuff. So I like it because it's, it, it can be really simple if you just want to jam out, you know, sign on for the, um, all about Android. If, that, if you don't have time to really think about the context and all that kind of stuff, you can just quickly add it. Um, or you can, you know, get really complex and say, oh, you know, it's, it's this priority and it's within this project and I should only do it when I have access to a phone. Um, as you just saw there, you can, you can share your tasks through, you know, most of your uh, Android sharing methods. And it's, it's a really great app. Um, it's made by Gene Trapani. It costs $2 in the market for the, you know, I guess the paid version. But actually, if you head to the website and you, you know, enable uh, third-party apps on your phone, you can actually download a full version of it and try it out for free. Um, you won't get the updates though. And like I said, Gene is constantly cr cranking on this app and, and adding really great features. So you'll, you'll want to spend the two bucks and uh, try out and, and just have a single text file where you can keep track of everything. So to do.txt, it's in the market. It's very it's, cool. It's really clever because it takes, I mean, at the beginning of this conversation, we were saying how, you know, having a notepad app, you just have a list of tasks and that's the same right. kind of idea. This is, you know, for years I worked with just a text file. I mean, like most people I think who worked in technology, we all had that text file, a to-do.txt on our desktop yeah. and, it was, and you just constantly refer to it. And I've tried to force myself to move out of that kind of habit. But this app kind of bridges the gap because that is such a natural uh, instinct for us is to open up that text file and just keep track of things. Mm -hmm. um, sure, absolutely. And so this gives you a little more power around it. That's why I, it's it, very clever of Gina to put this together. So there's also a command line um, interface for you Uber, Uber nerds nice. out there. You can yeah. actually, you know, if you're into Python and and to command lines, you can actually uh, control it right from the terminal. But uh, it's a it's it's really cool because uh, you know it doesn't try to control the way that you do your tasks. If you just want to write them out and check them off, you can. Or if you want to get really specific about uh, when and how you get things done, you can do that too. Yeah. Wow. Cool. Well, that's a very different um, different approach to the task manager. And actually, I mean, it's it's good that there are all these different uh, approaches because you know one might work well for one person and not for the other. And that's this, this way you have you know you have sim from what we've talked about, you have you know from very simple to seemingly complex, but maybe yeah. not necessarily overly complex. And, and not to lecture from the GTD Bible again, but all these tools are only as good as your use of them. So if you find a tool that works for you, but and another one, another app doesn't work for you, that's fine. Use whatever. Everybody has their own system and what works and how your brain works and and that sort of thing. So it's the the the, the trick is finding the app or finding the tool that helps you be more uh, efficient. So, Absolutely, that's what yeah. it's all about. All right, so we have our uh, little nifty poll. If you go to poll.cm/1099, just in time for tax season. Hey. Yeah, hey. I totally meant to do that. No, not really. But uh, you can go there and you can let us know what task app do you prefer to use or would you use? I should probably uh, rephrase that. But uh, go ahead and, and choose from the list there. I always hate putting other there, but there are always plenty of other apps in the store that we didn't talk about. And uh, nine times out of ten, that other bucket gets uh, quite a lot of yeah. votes. So The unintended, uh, unintended enjoyment of this poll is that they update live. So sometimes I just sit there and I watch people vote. I know. It's really right? kind of cool. It's really kind of neat. True. Yeah, it's like to do that. Txt is winning right now. It's seven votes. Seven Woo! votes. Yeah. So. Nice. Yeah. All right. So uh, yeah. So go ahead and uh, place your vote, and then we'll uh, talk about the results on the next show. Uh, so we might as well jump. Well, let's see here. No, actually, hey. All right, so we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to talk about our other sponsor, Squarespace. I actually have a Squarespace blog, jasonhell.net. I'm, I'm sure, actually, so we might I. all have a Squarespace yep. blog. Ronixo.com. I have one, too. Yeah. Where, where's yours, Eileen? Fightclubshow.com. Wow, <laughs> nice. Well, you know, we all use... Do you have one, Kevin, actually? 
Uh, no, mine's sitting on an <laughs> Move on, move on. If I had a cricket. <laughs> La -di -da -di -da. But let's convince Kevin right yeah. now. Yeah, you know, Kevin, yeah. you should really check out Squarespace because they have an easy to use UI. That's that's why I actually went with Squarespace. I didn't want to have to program uh, my entire website from scratch or you know hire somebody else to do it. So uh, they actually have a lot of these different modules that you can kind of slide into place and create it piece by piece, almost like you're putting a puzzle together with uh, some pretty basic uh, pieces. It's really easy to use. It's optimized for both beginners. If you're a CSS ex expert, you can actually go in there and drop in CSS code as well and kind of get geeky with it if you like. Uh, there are tons of design templates that you can choose from. You can customize it all to fit your needs. Uh, tons of services that are included, several mod modules that you can build your website around, uh, like blogs, uh, you know, importing different blogs that you might be with uh, into the Squarespace blog that you're creating. They've got forums, uh, form builders, if you want to build a form around a particular question or or around some sort of a service that you're offering. Flickr photo display, a Twitter widget that I awesome. use like crazy, um, and you can customize that uh, endlessly uh, to create a lot of different kind of approaches for how you deliver your Twitter messages. Uh, Google Maps, much more. There's uh, website tracking, built-in search engine optimizer, uh, permission access handling, cloud architecture for speed and site stability. Uh, some of this stuff maybe you'll use more than others, but it's it's working for you whether you know it. It's got everything. I mean, for years I had a WordPress blog on my server, and like there were so many updates, and I had to install the updates and do all the stuff. And and like with Squarespace, it's hosted. They they it's they're watching out for security. They're making sure everything lo is working. Um, it just works. It's just great. It scales. So if you get a ton of traffic because it's on a cloud-based kind of platform, they'll yep. scale up so they'll go with your traffic. So when you break that news on your blog, then you know, and you and you deal with the going from a hundred people to a thousand people, they'll deal with it. So it's pretty cool. That's right. Yeah. You can uh, you can use Squarespace for all of your needs, your website needs. You build. It, host it, update it at any time. Uh, and actually, for a 14-day free trial, you can go to squarespace.com slash twit, and you can check it out and try it for yourself. You can sign up for a free account. No credit card is needed. You can just, uh, you know, start it up, build your own website, see how you like it. And I'm pretty sure that you're going to like it a lot. Um, yeah. It's just so easy to use. It's so enjoyable. It almost has this kind of... Uh, you know, bubbly. Uh, it, it's hard to explain, but everything's very soft and, and uh, easy to look at yep. when you're kind of piecing <laughs> your site together. I mean, so I, 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 I mainly use it as a for like a music blog where I post like my mixes and, and video of bands and mm -hmm. embedding HTML is super easy and it's yeah. oh, it's great. It's, I love it. So right on. But so, how could anything be more warm and comforting than the WP underscore plugins folder? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Well said. Yep. <laughs> so this sounds there like you your go. cup of tea. Go to squarespace.com slash twit. And we thank Squarespace for their support of twit and all about Android. So thank you guys. Uh, finally, we're going to move on to the last section here, which is your feedback. We've had to cut this section short the last few times. And I think we're doing okay. We're, yeah. we're a little on the longer side, but I think we're doing fine. And we got to get to you guys. So let's start with Steven in Florida. Um, and he's he uh, sent in a message about pairing your Wii controller to your phone. Check this out. Hey, guys. It's Steven Vero Beach, Florida. I was listening to episode two, and you guys were talking about emulated games on your Android phone. Yes, it is very awkward trying to play one using either a keyboard or the on-screen controls. Uh, I found that if you have a Wii, you can use your Wiimote controllers uh, by purchasing an app on the market. Uh, I believe it's called Wii Controller IME. It will allow you to pair your Wii controller to your phone using Bluetooth, and uh, it makes it a lot easier to play those uh, Commodore 64 and uh, Nintendo uh, ROMs on your phone. I uh, love the show. Keep up the good work. Awesome. That might be the coolest Thanks, thing I've heard. Steven. I, yeah, I, 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 I kind of want to do that just so I could pull it out on the Muni on the bus in like San Francisco and just start playing with the Wii <laughs> controller, like just to see what it looks like. <laughs> like on one on one hand, it kind of sounds silly to to do that. Yeah. Like here's my screen and yeah. here's my controller. But on the other hand, that's so cool. That's like, so cool. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy your Wall Street Journal suckers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. I'm playing. How Defender. long is your yeah. commute? Oh, <laughs> uh, what is what is the helicopter game? Oh, what was that in the Commodore 64? Uh, oh, Choplifter? Choplifter, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Play some Choplifter or some Karataka. I knew that. Yeah, good job. Yeah, yeah. all right. Yeah. Happy you knew that, too. <laughs> all right. Uh, the, the, <laughs> We're old. Yes, yes, we are Commodore 64 geeks. I admit I yeah. wear it on my sleeve sometimes a little too much. Uh, Andy B also called. Oh, actually, no, he didn't call in. He sent in 
a voicemail. You can do that as well. AAA at twit.tv. You could also leave us a voicemail. I should mention that number. 347-SHOW-AAA. But this was emailed to us, and this is Andy B. talking about backing up. Hello, hello to the All About Android Avengers, or should I say agents? Either way, it sounds awesome. My name is Andy B. I'm from West Des Moines, Iowa, and I have a question on backing up my Evo 4G from Sprint. I would like to use something kind of like titanium backup, but maybe in a non-root-required flavor. So if you could answer that, that'd be awesome. Thanks again, guys. Keep up the good work. Love your show. Yeah, I use titanium backup for my phone. And it's amazing, but yep. of course it requires root. Yep. And I think in order to do that kind of personalized backup, and any of you correct me if I'm wrong, but I would imagine you kind of need root access so that you can get to all of those files. Yeah, I mean, uh, if you're talking all about all of them, them, them yeah, configuration them. files and things like that, yeah, I mean, root access is the kind of way to go. If you're going for data, then it's a little easier to deal with. Uh, yeah. yeah, and Titanium actually has Titanium Media Backup, which does yeah. just the stuff that it doesn't need without root, but it, oh, you don't okay. get everything. Right, right. Um, and then, of course, if you have root, I mean, one of one of the things that I do all the time is in uh, Clockwork Recovery, which is kind of the recovery mode. When you first turn on your phone, you can kind of boot into there and do a lot of under the hood uh, type of stuff. And you can do an Android update, uh, a backup, and that's literally an image of your phone at that point in time. Yeah. And uh, that's saved me a lot. And but this is super again, geeky. But this root. is super geeky stuff, though. I mean, when you're talking about root and you're talking about root access and things like that, you're talking kind of hardcore, kind of under the hood kind of stuff. So be careful. I mean, mm -hmm. so I always, I just want to give that disclaimer. No, always. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and actually, Andy's like yelling at us right now because he's like that. But I told, you know, I told you I don't have root. You're not answering my question. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So here are a couple of options yes. for you. My backup pro, which is $499. Uh, I've never, I've never used either, either of these. I think I've the used way. that before. I've heard a lot about it. And actually, yeah. uh, Obsidian offing in the chat room just said my backup pro is, is great for yeah. non-rooted phones. They back up uh, to to your SD, uh, but also to their servers. There's also by McAfee Wave Secure uh, for a one year subscription is $19.99, and that's a remote lock, wipe, backup, restore, and tracking for your phone. So yeah. it kind of does a host of things for not, I mean, $19.99. McAfee is pretty, like I mean, they're, 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 they've been around for decades, so they're, they're a pretty established security company, and they do that. And the, the, that whole tracking and stuff like that for mm -hmm. a oh, total, that's a great app. So yeah, yeah. Uh, might be worth the 20 bucks. Right on. So. All right. Uh, and I'm, sh I'm sure there are plenty that we missed. So email us and let us know. A at twit.tv. Uh, and just a few emails here uh, before we go. Uh, first of all, in, in relation to last week's cloud streaming music apps discussion, we got a few replies on both of these points. So I'll just read an example from each. Uh, Nemo writes in, uh, I hope that's his real name, or maybe it isn't, <laughs> Subsonic, which a lot of you uh, through Twitter and email mentioned Subsonic as a free alternative to Audio Galaxy. Kind of does the same type of thing, streaming from your own server at home, creating your own, uh, your own cloud, essentially. It says it's very polished, low resource usage for your server, and is optimized for very large media collections. And one of the most recent versions actually allows you to stream video as well. It transcodes music and video on the fly to support pretty much any internet connection and it's very very customizable that's what i've heard about this is the beauty of audio galaxy is it's kind of dead simple but you don't have a whole lot of uh tweakability to the server stuff on subsonic you supposedly do so that's subsonic.org and then um sean the historian from calgary wrote in and he uses a uh, pogo plug which is kind of more a hardware solution, right? I, I don't know a whole lot about Pogo Plug, but it's essentially it I've hooks heard up of it. network attached yeah. storage uh, hard drive so you can access the music anywhere via a browser or the Pogo Plug Android app. Uh, and <clears throat> I, I think you just plug this piece of hardware directly into your drive yeah. or something like that. So, so it's kind of more of a hardware uh, approach to doing uh, what we were talking about last week. So there's a couple more options for you that you can check out. Cool. And uh, let's see here. And Ron, I believe you have the last email. All right. Um, so Bill Burlingame from Huntsville, Alabama, uh, wrote in, and he's uh, basically Bill says he's ready to buy his first smartphone. It'll probably be an Android. He's locked into Verizon since his wife has 18, 18 months left in their family plan. So many, all of us suffering from this I contract. I know. Yeah. You. <laughs> uh, the more Mac Weekly shows I see, the stronger my anti-Apple sentiment becomes. Um, I don't. I don't change phones very often. My current phone is the LG ENV2. I'm leaning towards the HTC HTC Thunderbolt, but Verizon has some pretty tempting offers on certified pre-owned units: the Samsung Fascinate, the HTC Droid, 
uh, Incredible, and the Motorola Droid X. Any opinions of these? So he's looking for some guidance on his phone. He wrote a little more in there, just kind of summarized what we got. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I I know that I've seen uh, the Droid X uh, quite a bit, yeah. and that's really really been a popular phone. Now it's kind of you know taking the backseat to some of the newer phones like the Thunderbolt yeah. or whatever. But it's yeah. still a, a great phone, and Droid I've known Incredible. a few people that really love the Droid X. Yeah, and Droid Incredible, I've heard good things too about too. Generally, I I, I try to stay away from the um, the refurbished pre owned kind of units. I mean, I, if budget is an issue, I can understand why. But um, if you go, I mean, if you if you're stuck with Verizon, you've got 18 months left in your contract. You know, if you say, "Hey, we'll renew for another two years," if you're fine with Verizon, then take the upgrade and get the discounted price on, on one of the nicer phones. That's what I that's what I used to do when I used to play with Verizon. I'd yeah. walk in there all full of piss and vinegar and be like, "I'm going to leave unless you give me this discount." And so yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They'll bend to your whim at that. Point. Usually they do. But. Yeah, they they like family plans. The uh, carriers, their their yeah. stockholders like family plans too. So you can you have a lot of leverage there. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think this might be a good time for my prediction as to what phone you're going to be getting. Oh yes. Oh really? Which one? I, I've I've reviewed the phones. I've reviewed the 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 offerings that are out there. Yeah. And I've decided you're getting the Droid Bionic. Oh, you decided well, that's what that, I said. Huh? Yeah, I know, but hey, I agree with you. It's okay. <laughs> well, I although I really like that Casio, uh, that all that all weather one. That, that, there there that is was, something about owning a Casio phone. Exactly, that has and it's a, and it's like tough, and it's like it's like yeah, it's like durable. kind of like a pod, and which isn't yeah. what I think of Casio as being yeah. like a durable. Um, not at all, but I think yeah, it is my keyboard <laughs> or my calculator. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but that Casio phone's pretty cool. But I think you're gonna go Droid Bionic. I think that's all right, my, that's well, my prediction. So okay. me and Eileen, we're. I'm sorry I wasn't more controversial. No. <laughs> Kevin. I thought we were going to fight about this. <laughs> I know. Instead, we'll just agree and we'll hold hands and we'll dance. It'll be great. Yeah, so this way, if I do get a Droid Incredible, we'll all be happy. Yeah, exactly. Yay. <laughs> Until I find a reason to not like my phone anymore. <laughs> Which very well could happen. Yeah. Uh, well, Kevin, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, once again, um, go ahead and plug away. What you got out there? Okay, Complete Android Guide at CompleteAndroidGuide.com, the uh, how-to manual for Android. We have a new edition out covering uh, Zoom-like tablets with a honeycomb and phones that are up to gingerbread. So your phone, it's actually future-proof for when you eventually get that. And uh, we're giving away a Zoom tablet. So uh, go to CompleteAndroidGuide.com. Uh, there's also some links in the show notes, I believe, uh, to the giveaway. And you can win a Zoom if you buy the book or uh, contribute to our wiki site. And also anyone who's bought the book before and wants to get the new, you know, the fresh hotness, that's only 99 cents for you. So, uh, you know, check it out. Radical. Check it out. It'd be awesome to have a, a listener or, or a fan of the show. Uh, that would be great. That Zoom. Yeah, that'd, that'd be, be really great. cool. Indeed. Right can, really we tease next week's, um, can we tease next week's apps? Oh, yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. Go for Ooh. it. Uh, well, we just got an email from Richard J. Smith. I'm not going to read the email, but next week is camera apps. I have a really good one. If you follow me at Eileen TV on Twitter, you already know which one I'm going to, to review. That's all I'm going to say. I've been talking about it for, for this whole past week, and I can't wait to tell everybody, but I'm going to wait one more week because that's the theme of our show next week. Camera apps. Right on. Hey, nothing, nothing like a good tease. And then, Ron, uh, where can people find you? People can find me. You can find me on Twitter at twitter.com slash ronxo. You can find me over at ifanboy.com if you're into comic books or graphically.com, company I work for. If you're a digital comic reader with an Android app, you can get it there. And my personal yeah, my personal website at ron, ronxo.com. So. Right on. On. And I am Jason Howell. You can find me on Twitter at Raygun01 or on this show. That's hey. that's about it. All right. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. That's it for this week. Don't forget, you can be a part of the show by sending us a voicemail at 347-777-3776. That's 